Hi, everybody. It is uh, good to be back with you. Um, it is on this final day of January, just after two o'clock on a Wednesday. You know, the last time I spoke with you, I was at a weather conference um, down in Lake Tahoe. It was fantastic. A lot of great information. Then I came home and got sick. And then even though I started to feel better on Sunday into Monday, I didn't have a strong enough voice to talk for more than a minute or so. So we'll see if we can get through this today. But that's the reason for the long absence. And for that, I apologize. Okay, wrapping up January and kind of hammering home that I think it's really astounding. The combo of total precept last month, December, and this month that we're ending January has been amazing. We don't see back-to-back -back months this wet very often. We really don't. You can go years and years and years and not see this. December, 8.73 inches. Normal is 5.77 Usually the wettest month, we went over eight inches. This month, normal five, we're at 9.42, and we'll add whatever we get today. The rain amounts today are pretty light, so probably not going to add much. But, I mean, the fact that we, we picked up, what, over 18, 19 inches of rain over the last two months across portions of the Willamette Valley. That's a lot when you say it out loud, right? If you go back to October 1st, the water year, 25.91 inches since October one. We're running a surplus in the precip department, which is a good thing, right? Yeah, of 6.39 inches. What does that mean? That's basically four to six weeks of added rainfall that we've snuck in. Meaning if it didn't rain for the next six weeks in a row, that's what it would take to get us back down to being normal. So the surplus is fantastic. Uh, you know, the kind of thing you want to have. Now, the news is not all good. Because, as you know, following the cold weather came all that warm weather, the warm weather that we're actually still in right now. And that has taken its toll site-specific on the Mount Hood snowpack. So the Mount Hood snowpack at 5,400 feet is now down to 74 inches. It was 86% of normal, 86%. But now the warm air has melted more than 20 inches of snow off the snowpack at past level. Uh, up to about 6,000 feet. And now that snow level that was 86% is back down to 73% of normal. And that will continue to fall. I mean, I don't see any big snows coming. So we're going to be back in the 60 some percent range of normal here pretty quick. So that's that's the bad news side of the equation. Okay. Uh, I want to get into what's going on and then I want to talk about what we're seeing through at least the mid part of February. Okay. And let me be clear. I don't see any what I would call big, significant, strong storms really, period, um, over the next two weeks. Doesn't mean we're not going to have some decent snow days in the mountains. I think we will. Doesn't mean we're not going to have a pretty good rain day or two here in the valley. We will. Just don't see anything that's going to come with a bunch of watches and warnings or anything like that. <clears throat> All right. So I'm going to try to get through this. So here we are today, the uh, infrared satellite picture from the goes west. Here you see a big low spinning offshore. This is going to sit there tomorrow. And it's going to weaken Friday, but stay offshore. So we've got scattered showers in the forecast as long as this low is offshore. Now, see this fetch of moisture down here? This is where there's a bit of an atmospheric river and kind of an elongated heightened area of water vapor and where the jet stream winds are, all that funneling heavier moisture, basically into northern California and then clipping up into about the North Bend area. North Bend had picked up over an inch and a half of rain since midnight now along the southern Oregon coast. But you get north of that, you get north of that up into our, why would I say our area, Eugene, Salem, Newport, Astoria, et cetera, haven't had much. The, the rain amounts have been really light. And I don't think we're going to see much total rain tomorrow or Thursday either or into Friday. All those scattered showers will continue to be in the area. Here's what the, uh, what I like to call kind of the, the future cast type movie moving forward from the National Blended Model Show. So here we are at 4 p.m. this afternoon. This is mostly really light rain here in the western portion of our state. We've had some rain out in the gorge as well, but it's been really light stuff. Here we are overnight tonight. See, it gives us some dry time. The consistent rain continues to stay down here in California, especially. This is um, Thursday. Get, let's get you into, um, let me back it up. I'm sorry. Here's Thursday late morning. We do have an increase of showers out east tomorrow. Haven't had much out that way today. But here's some tomorrow morning scattered showers out east. Pretty consistent shower activity along the coast, that bullseye down in Northern California. But the time's pretty dry elsewhere, right? Here's Thursday afternoon, tomorrow afternoon at 4 p.m. Show showers picking up a little bit. More scattered stuff into Friday morning. I think this is the last frame right here. This is actually Thursday overnight. It would be 10 p.m. Thursday night. 
So certainly nothing organized. That's all I want you to get out of that. Nothing organized. Light rain totals at best tonight. Light rain totals at best tomorrow. Light rain totals at best Friday. And by light rain totals, I'm, I'm telling you, I don't see... Most of us are probably going to be looking at a less than a tenth of an inch of rain today. Same thing tomorrow, same thing Friday. Okay. Uh, and the weekend has the possibility of not only being dry, but showing at least partly cloudy skies. Wouldn't that be something? All right, let's look at the flow pattern. I like to do this. It's the biggest roadmap. It's where you always start when you're looking at a, uh, a flow pattern over five, six, seven days. You want to put together a seven-day forecast, for example. So a reminder, if you're new to my videos, this uh, blue contour line, that's the 540 contour at 18,000 feet. This, these are pressure lines. But this 540 contour is kind of the divider between the coldest air in our hemisphere and then the warmer air pockets. So it's kind of where the polar jet is, we like to say. So as long as this blue line is to our north, we're not going to be getting into any real cold air. It's probably going to be a mix of kind of maritime air coming off the Pacific, cooler air potentially at times down out of the Gulf of Alaska, but nothing really cold, all right? So here we are this afternoon. There's that big low. It's pretty deep, 519 uh, offshore, but it never comes inland. So that's why we're not getting a big rainstorm out of this thing. And again, the flow pattern is down here in California, the main flow trajectory. So I'll just play this into tomorrow. And notice the 540 contour. Here it comes into Astoria. We we are going to be getting a little bit cooler the next several days, and, and especially in the weekend. Not frigidly cold, but we're going to be seeing temperatures that have been way up here above normal and getting closer to normal. Okay, as we get rolling in the first day of February. Let me play this into Friday. <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm going to try to make it through this. <coughs> Low center right there. It's weaker, but feeds us scattered showers. Friday p.m. There's that low. Now it's starting to really weaken. Notice how the cooler air that's kind of is staying up to our north looks like it's going to flirt with us. So here's your weekend. This is Saturday afternoon. There's a low out here. Uh, there's a shower chance. But there's no real moisture feed. And what was a kind of a, a, a tight low with a good flow pattern into us uh, disappears. This is just kind of a broad meandering flow. That's why there's a scattered shower chance. But this is mostly a partly cloudy dry pattern shaping up for Saturday. And really the same thing for Sunday. Now, clearly you've seen something develop. So this is going Sunday night into Monday. And that is our next chance of what could be kind of a soak over day. So let me play this into Monday. Here you are Monday morning. Pretty good low. This is a solid south flow pattern. And we do expect this moisture to flow across California. Heaviest amounts will be in California again. But we'll get some, some rain. And I think it, it could be more at least raining at times than not on Monday coming up from the south. And, you know, by nature, south, that's a fairly warm weather pattern. Some of these days could be warmer than what the seven days I'm going to show you in a moment. Um, and then once that stops, see how this brings another low down? There's continuing shower chance Tuesday of next week. Here's another one dropping in. This will be Thursday of next week. So the, the verbiage has been through the first 10 days of February, we were at least going to be looking at, you know, a lot of days with some rain and no more wildly warm days, temperatures kind of closer to normal, maybe even a little bit below normal. So what I just showed you all supports that, that trough. And then this does bring some ridging in as we get going into what would be a week from this weekend. This would be uh, Saturday, the uh, 10th day of February right here. Uh, this ridging doesn't look to be very long lived on this model. This is the European model. I just want to jump to the American GFS model. And we'll start on that same day. Let me go ahead and just play it in. Here's Saturday. I want you to watch this model. See the blue contour way up here? This model gets into more prolonged ridging. Look at this. This is big ridging. If we don't get stuck in morning fog, these would be warm days, well up into the 50s, mid-February, maybe even some 60-degree days, okay? Then notice this trough digging offshore as we go into the 20th day of February. This is interesting because what we have mid-February on this America model into the latter weeks of February is what we saw back in December. Kind of ridging for us, some rain at times, but very mild. And then the main heavier rainstorms coming down into California, although in December we certainly had our share of heavier rain amounts. But this is showing more often than not the heavier rainstorms into California and us getting back into a pretty mild weather pattern mid-February into the remainder of the month. So we'll see if that, co if that comes true. Um, I, I think certainly the, the first couple of weeks of February have a stronger tendency to be normal to below. 
And the back half of February has more of a temperature tendency to be normal to maybe way above, okay? So that's what I'm seeing when I look at all the extended modeling. This is a, the temperature air mass map at 5,000 feet that I like to show you. This is this afternoon. Here's that cooler air from that big low out in the Pacific. Um, but we're still mild. We're still in the 50s, right? And it shows the, the milder red air inland. And let's play this into the weekend. Remember I said the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, going to be getting a little cooler. I think we have a chance to see highs in the upper 40s, shy of 50. This shows that. The cooler air from the Pacific kind of moving in, taking the place of the really crazy mild air that we've had. And then we just kind of stay normal to cool through about the 10th, uh, the first 10 days of February. And then this is going to show some warming once we get into February 10. And then it kind of toys with us. But look at this, February 14th. There's no Arctic air. This is all really warm ridging. So again, that, that that's the pattern. I, I, unless something really changes, we're done with the threat of any really cold Arctic air this winter because you wouldn't expect us to see that in March. Not that we can't, but you wouldn't expect it. So what's the National Weather Service say real quick? Well, just coming out today, uh, no, let, let me correct myself. This actually came out a week ago. Um, and it, it's shown us that they believe that February which is what you're looking at February. Oh, hold on. I don't think, yeah, okay. This is what I wanted to show you. I apologize, I got lost. I didn't have the image come up that I thought it threw me for a loop. So issued today, January 31. This is the brand new updated February outlook, temperature wise from the weather service. And it shows the bullseye of warm air in February now over the Dakotas and Minnesota. A couple of weeks back, the bullseye on the same outlook for February was over us. Now the weather service still has us in an above normal pattern but not the bullseye of it. And clearly they're thinking as well, what was going to be the bullseye across the West has now moved off to the East. So I think that's making room for some cooler temperatures than normal, potentially through the first 10 days of February. And then getting into some warmer temps the rest of the rest of the month. I think that's what that's uh, literally correcting itself for. Okay. Um, let's look at real quick, just run around the state and I'll get you to the Portland seven day. 38 right now at Timberline. Snow levels are going to come down the next several days, but there's no big snow. Starting to see the, the bases really fall off. At one point, Timberline was 107 inches on the ground. They've lost 21 inches of that. Now They're now down to 86. Meadows was well up into the high 90s at one point, now 77. Skeeble had 50 inches on the ground, now 28. So the warm weather is definitely taking its toll. And while there's some cooling, we're still looking at 40 on Friday, 39 Saturday, 39 Sunday. Chance of some flurries this weekend with partly sunny skies, but nothing significant. And then this Monday of next week, snow levels could start at four and then go up to five with that push of moisture. It's going to get Portland kind of a rainy Monday. There's a temperature of 38. Obviously, if the warmer weather right now passes, are all great. There's government camp, 46, clean pavement. Santiam's clean. Cabot Hill out across 84, 49 degrees. I think it was 60 in John Day at midday today. So that's that's really warm stuff. The gorge, by the way, is just now melting all the snow from the cold weather. Here's Indian Creek Golf Course. Two days ago, this was completely covered. Now they're finally just about done with the snow in the Hood River Valley. Again, this is Indian Creek Golf Course. Cathedral Ridge Winery right here still has some decent snow. Again, this is in Hood River, but they're melting it off as well. Temperatures in the gorge. Crown Point, 43. Cascade Locks, the same. Hood River and the Dows have been 3940 today. So they still have an east wind. It's been gusting to 38 miles per hour which is a little crazy. And that's one reason why the gorge also hasn't really seen a lot of warming. They've never gotten into the um, the south wind pattern that's that's warmed the valley up, where we had the 60s last weekend in Salem, for example. Current temperatures, though, not bad. There's Medford, 61. Wow. Bend, 55. You folks watching this from Central Oregon, great day for you. Warmer than we've been here in Portland, 58 this afternoon. You've had a touch of some light rains, cloudy, but not much. Tomorrow, 52. And then you will be cooling down as well. There's the weekend with temperatures back down to the low 40s, closer to normal, mainly dry, some sun. And then you'll get into some, some wet weather. It looks like the first part of the week, too, with temperatures getting back up to around uh, 40 degrees over in beautiful central Oregon. All right, so here's Portland's uh, seven-day courtesy of Hazeldale Tire Pros. Uh, really nice people. Take care of all my tire needs. 53 this afternoon in Portland. Really hasn't been that breezy unless you get the east winds out near the gorge. Those east winds have been gusting to 35 or better today. will be more like 20 to 25 top gusts tomorrow in East Multnomah County, by the way. Tomorrow's a lot like today, both temperature-wise, rainfall, shower-wise, everything. Sunday, I can't guarantee sun breaks, but I think as that low weekends, we're probably going to see some sun breaks open up. 
scattered showers. Here's a very slight cool off, 49. Saturday and Sunday, I've got mostly dry days. We talked about this with a shower chance, if that makes sense. Temperatures in the 40s. Could be freezing. We haven't done that in a long time. Could be freezing Sunday morning in the valley. And then the wet Monday, and then back up to sun and showers in Tuesday, 48. So good to be with you again. Thanks for subscribing. If you haven't done that to my channel, please do so. I'll get back on to talking to you on a regular basis. It's good to be feeling better. I'm meteorologist Rod Hill. Goodbye for now.